Isaiah 6, 9 through 10. And he said, here's the Lord speaking. The Lord said, go and tell this people. All right, the Lord's wanting somebody to go and tell something. <laughs> hear ye indeed. That sounds like my God. Go tell them to hear. But understand not. Whoa, wait a minute. Did we read that right? Go tell this people, hear you indeed, but, but understand not? Why would he tell them not to understand? And see ye indeed. Well, there we go. Okay, the Lord wants us to see. I knew it would come back around. But, oh, wait a minute, perceive not. Wants us to hear but not understand. Wants us to see but not per perceive. Huh. Next verse. Make the heart of this people fat. In other words, make it callous. Make it thick. Wait a minute. Am I reading scripture here? And make their ears heavy. Make them dull. And shut their eyes. And we went over that last week. Why is this language? Because that's what they wanted. I don't want nothing to do with God. I've told you again and again and again and again and again and again. You've said no a bazillion times, so, so be it. I will let you have exactly what you want. I'm giving you what you want. I'm letting you choose. And then this week, we're going to concentrate on the last part here. Lest they see. Oh, we're going to talk about some lest they see. Lest they see with their eyes. Because, listen, the first part, the, fir the, the first part is God, listen, reacting to our response to him. This part here is God's heart. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Father, thank you for your word. We magnify you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. So last week we focused on hear and not understand. We focused on see and not perceive. Last week, we focused also on making the heart fat or making it calloused, making it thick, thicken, like putting layer upon layer upon layer on something. And we focused on the Lord not only allowing our choices. Remember, this, if this seems foreign, you can go back and watch last week's. And as we say out here, it's not going to cost you a dime, so no charge means what? No excuse. No excuse. And you can watch it as many times as you want. Stop it, rewind it, take notes, whatever you want to do. Amen. Amen. We focused on the Lord not only allowing our choices, but honoring our choices. The Lord will intervene in influencing your decisions, but he will never make you make a decision. You choose. So the Lord not only allowing our choices, but honoring our choices. So much so that he enforces them. So be it as we want. You don't want anything to do with me. You don't want anything to do it. You don't want anything to do it. Come on, please. I want you to, I want you to have something to do with me. Please. I, okay, I'm going to send these people to tell them. Send these people to tell them. I'll make sure these verses get in their ears. I'm going to tell them, what, no, 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 no? You don't want nothing to do with me? Okay. So be it. So be it. The focus was on our choosing to live apart from the Lord, apart from his word, apart from his will, Apart from his counsel, apart from his comfort, apart from his help, 
living a part in all aspects of our lives, or maybe, maybe just the select parts. <laughs> well, I don't want you all the way gone, God. That, well, well, I'll keep you in for this one. I'll, 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 I need your help for this one. The select parts. We willingly and knowingly choose for him to be absent in and those that we willingly choose for him to be present in. Once again, you choose. Hallelujah. But this week, let's focus on the last part of the verse that we read this morning. Hallelujah. The part where we see the Lord's heart. In other words, we see his intention in it all. It's pretty evident from last week seeing our intention in it. But just because it's the Lord's will doesn't mean it'll come to pass. As we said, the Lord's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But is everybody coming to repentance? No. Well, I thought that was the Lord's will. But yet out of his own mouth, he says, narrow is the gate. But broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many go therein. So many will go the broad way. But is that his will? Absolutely not. As we said last week, well, how, how could a loving God ever send somebody to hell? You're right, he never would. It's not his choice, it's ours. It's our choice. Amen. But let's, let's see the Lord's heart, his intent and all. Lest they see. Lest they see. If God be for you, who could be against you? Who could separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? God's for us. God's always longing for us. If there's ever a point in our life that we can't hear his voice no more, it's not because he quit speaking. It's because we've moved so far away and we're so calloused we can't hear it no more. That was our own choice. That was our own decision. Because God is not a just, okay, well, don't let them understand. Don't let them see. Don't let them perceive. I told them twice. That's all I'm going to tell them. See, un praise God, he's not like most parents. Don't let me tell you the third time. If I count to three, man, God has told me three times, 30 times, 3,000 on certain things in my life. Praise God for that. It's never a part of God not wanting for us to be with him. It's, it's, it's usually us not, even want, not wanting God to be with us in those areas of our life. But that doesn't change the fact that God has less they see. See, just like the prodigal son, you don't hear this preached very often, but notice that when he wanted to go on his own and do his thing, notice that the father wasn't happy about it, but he's like, you choose. Father didn't follow him. Please, 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 please. If you want to leave, you can leave. He didn't go chase him down. He didn't go try to follow him, spy up on him, lay in wait. But what he did do is he stayed right, listen, he stayed right where he left from. God will always be right where you left him. And God will always meet you, listen, where you're at, not where you pretend to be. God's like, I'm over here. This is where you've left. Yeah, but this, that, and the other, and I got this going on in my life. Come on, God, I'm praying about this now. Come over here. We can't do business until you come over here. And notice that even though the father didn't chase him down because you choose, 
the father didn't pack his house up and go move somewhere either because the father's always stable. He's the rock. He moves not. Amen. Amen. So when the father was there waiting on the prodigal son, what was he doing? He was doing lest they see. I'm not going anywhere, but if he has a change of heart, I'm going to be right here waiting on him. As we said last week, if it's getting dark in your life, it's because you've walked away from the light. Because God's light is bright, but if you keep walking and keep walking and keep walking, the further you go, the less illumination you're going to have. But at any time, lest they... And then each step, you get more light and more light and more light. That's the way it works. Glory be to his name. Lest they see. The father was waiting on them. Lest they see. Or another translation reads, otherwise they might see. Lest they see. Otherwise they might see. That's speaking about their heart. God doesn't look on the outward appearance as man sees. God looks upon the heart. Everything in our life always starts in the heart. That's why the scripture says, guard your heart with all diligences. All diligences. Why? For out of it, out of your heart, flow the issues of life. I might make you mad here, but that's okay. Where does the issues of life flow from? Well, Pastor, I just got a bunch of issues. You didn't guard your heart. No, it was them. It was this. It was that. No, you didn't guard your heart because out of it flow the issues of life. Amen. Amen. Guard your heart. God's talking about the heart here, lest they see. Now, there's, there's a conversion. There's a turnaround in their heart. Because God's always dealing with the heart. It's speaking about their heart, their why. Listen, their want to. You know why the scripture says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed? There ain't no other step. Y'all ever been in the if you've never been in addiction or nothing like that, this is a foreign language, sorry. Ain't got time to explain it, but y'all know the language I'm speaking. He, he'll set you free. That's the only step that you gotta have. But listen, he'll never take it from you. Lord, just take it from me. Lord's like, not gonna do it. But I'm here if you want to give it to me. I'm not gonna pry your hands open. You can keep them closed, and you can pray. You can huckle a shunda. You can have oil throw it on your head. Pastor, lay heads, hands on your head until you've got about as much hair on your head as he does. Amen. And it still is not going to do any good because you've not opened up your hand lest they see. And here's how the Son sets you free indeed because he doesn't go to the symptoms. He goes to the sickness. How do doctors know the sickness? Because they examine the symptoms. But you can take care of the symptoms and still die from the sickness. Because when the Lord goes to the heart, the reason he can set people free. Yeah, we don't water things down down here at Redemption Mobile. Amen. We don't have water like a thimble deep. We, I will challenge you out here. Amen. The reason he can set you free is because, listen, he goes to. He doesn't want to band-aid symptoms. He doesn't want to do behavior modification. He doesn't want to just reason with you and, 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 give, and give you logic on, well, I guess I need to quit doing that. It could kill me. Well, I don't want to die. Well, I can't have best of both worlds. I guess I'll, 
I need to quit doing that. See, that's behavior modification. That's still dealing with your head. You have come to a, a well, praise God, at least you got some reason going on. Amen. Just like I tell people about cigarettes, that's, you're just, that's slow suicide. That's all it is. You go ahead and keep smoking them. You ain't dying tomorrow, but it's slow suicide. It's ticking time off of your life. But it's your life, right? You choose. And so... When the Lord goes to the heart, he doesn't want to band-aid it. He doesn't want behavior modification. He doesn't want logic or reason. Listen, listen. Here's how he sets you free. The Lord says, I want your want to to change. You don't have to worry about any program steps or any major prayers, somebody praying for you, laying hands on you. Listen, all you got to do is just not want to anymore. I've told the story. I remember when I was in the world and, uh, you know, if I was arrested for being a Christian, there wouldn't be enough evidence to convict me. Take the cups off of him. He ain't a Christian. I can remember a time we partied hard on Friday night with the band. We had an open band practice. People come over. Girls, they had some drugs. I didn't really like drugs very much. It freaked me out, so I had excess of alcohol. <laughs> Amen. Partying on Friday night. Then Saturday night, there was another party going on at, at, a, at a club, and then an after hours party with some other bands in, in the area and stuff. So we partied hard there too, and it was like two nights in a row. And man, I woke up Sunday morning feeling like I had been run over by a truck. And I had a buddy call and says, You will not believe this. So and so in the county over is having an unbelievable party. Listen, and he's got all his sisters and his sister's college friends coming over. And they're hot. You need to make it over here. There's a free keg. I mean, it's just going to be a blast. I said, no. What do you mean, no? You ain't got to pay for nothing. I'll even come pick you up. You don't have to drive. There's plenty enough booze there. Man, it's going to be a big, it's going to be 70 30 ratio women to men. You got to, you, 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 are you, are you okay? And I said, no, I'm not okay. I don't feel like moving out of my bed. Why didn't I, listen, why could I not be tempted at that point? Because I reached a point on that day where I didn't want to. God wants to get to your want to's because he knows once you don't want to anymore, you don't have to pray about it. It's gone. Whew. As I said, starting out with this line of thinking, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You're free indeed now because your want to has changed. I know you guys laughed at me, but, you know, listen, everybody's got their vice, everybody's got a button, everybody's got something to listen they have to deal with more than others. But if you can get that to where you don't want to anymore, you're free indeed. No behavior modification. No, I better do my devotion in the morning. I better pray at 12 o'clock noon. I better get with God at night and call the pastor up and have somebody to pray. Prayer chain for me. I need help. Somebody help me just don't want to anymore and you're free. Like I said, you can't tempt me to want to, I don't care what kind of a sports figure or I don't care how he's, he's chiseled his face is or whatever, it doesn't matter. You cannot get me to desire to want to stroke another man's hairy leg. I will not be tempted with homosexuality. Listen, Why? Because I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, but he's a sports figure and he's been on Sports Illustrated. He's got a six pack. He's chiseled like a Greek god. Well, hallelujah. Brother's in shape. Don't want to rub his leg. Jesus. Don't want to. Amen. But he got a pretty face. He's on the cover of GQ. Well, he's blessed. They don't want to hold his hand. I'm good. Yes, Lord. 
You see what I'm saying? Your want to. And it goes to your heart. But if you don't want anything to do with God, then God will honor that. But listen to his heart, lest they see. I want you to want me. What did he say to Peter? He says, do you love me more than these? Now let me teach you for a second. God is no respecter of persons. It says that many times in scripture. He's no respecter of persons. There's no way Jesus is going to sit there, look at Peter, knowing all the rest of them are like, listening, snooping in on it. And he's going to say, do you want to be my favorite, Peter? Do you love me more than these? See how all of a sudden it's an us and them? He's not going to cause division and separation. Had nothing to do with the disciples sitting around. Read your scripture. What did Peter do? He went out of fishing. In other words, before he saw the resurrected Christ, it was, I'm going back to familiar. Yes. Yes. I tried this Jesus stuff for three years. I thought he was the one. I, they killed him. Yes. I left my home. I left my family. I left my business. I got skin in the game. It's not like I just drive a little further to church on Sunday so the Lord should throw me out some favors I gave my life to him and his ministry and he's dead I'm going fishing I'm frustrated I'm aggravated I'm going back to well I know what I can do I'm going back to familiar and as they were sitting around there you know what was sitting in front of them because scripture tells us they were cooking fish, wasn't they? Yeah. And what did the fish symbolize? It symbolized Peter's old life, Peter's familiar. And so what the Lord was really saying is, Peter, do you love me more than your old life? Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than being able to go back and doing what you were doing, not being hated by society? Actually, you know, providing for your family, working with your hands, bringing in some money. Obviously, you know, I know that they were sometimes they didn't catch nothing, but you can't keep doing that year after year and not do nothing and not catch nothing and stay in business. He had a, he probably had a low day a few times, but he was good at what he did. How do we know that? Because not only did he do it, he had partners, he had investors. Ah, oh, y'all don't want you're not ready for me this morning. He had investors in his in his in his business. So he did quite fine. Gave it all up. And the Lord says, do you love me more than these? In other words, do you want me, Peter, more than anything? Yes. He went to his heart. Lest they see, feed my sheep. What did he say? You're going to deny me. But when you become converted, strengthen the brethren. What did he just say? He just said, lest they see. Amen. I'm speaking about the want to, the heart. God wants us to want to. Let me say that a little slower. I don't want you to miss that. God wants us to want to. It's God's will for all to be saved to be set free, to be delivered, to be blessed, healed, to be full of joy, to be full of peace, and full of prosperity. But not everyone wants their wants the way God wants it for them. <laughs> but that's the way he created it to function. But you choose. You choose. So... There is no problem with the wants, nor the fulfilling of them. So what or where is the problem? 
Well, the problem comes when we proceed to obtain the wants apart from our source, God. Our attempt to meet our needs apart from God enters us into self-preservation. And that's also called humanism. Let me just define that so we're on the same page. Because see, this generation is getting squirrely. You could be talking about the same things with the, dif with the same terms, but they have a different, definition, a different definition than you do. So you really can't talk. Same words, but you're talking about something totally different. So let's be on the same page here. Humanism is man meeting his needs without God. Humanism is not being focused on human beings. Its philosophy is based on human ideology. Yes. Humanism removes God from the picture and human worth is derived apart from any notion of God. Yes. Thus, in the search for truth, there is no higher appeal than to natural human reason and experience. Humanism is the focusing of energy and attention to humankind and not looking for help or salvation from any deity. Humanism is a secular religion that seeks to move away from theism to reliance upon scientific method as the basis for truth and authority. So most people have an internal desire for joy. Most people have an internal desire for peace, for prosperity, for health, for approval, for acceptance, for affection, for attention, for affirmation, for security, for comfort, for encouragement, for support, for appreciation, and for respect. And those are a list of physical and emotional needs we all have. We were all created with the desire for each of those to be filled. So the desires are normal, but the problem arises when we are the ones who try to fulfill them ourselves apart from the Father. God created all things. Look at your neighbor and say all. all. And if you're sitting beside Ricky, make sure that you look at him when you say that. Don't be, don't be looking at your neighbor and not say something to Ricky. Everybody look at Ricky and say all. 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 Amen. <laughs> He'll tell you about it after service. Amen. God created the universe as we know it and as we don't know it. Did you catch that? These people that are so smart. I think they know everything. You could draw a circle and say, okay, this circle represents all knowledge of all time for all generations. How much of that do you know? And sometimes they'll be arrogant. They might even, you know, draw a space of 70%. Okay, 70% of all knowledge to be known you know. Okay, so you don't know nothing about that 30%? And you try to tell me you have a proof, all you got's a theory? What if what I'm talking about's in that 30%? Mm, hallelujah. But God's crowning achievement was the creation of the ones who were created in His image. That's us. We were created for His good pleasure. We were never created to be apart from Him in all aspects of our being, whether it's spirit, soul, or body. Yes. And when we leave the system He created to meet our own needs, we leave Him. In these verses, we see man trying to see and hear and understand apart from His source. And as we discussed it in length last week, he will allow it, but it doesn't mean that he condones it. And besides, he also knows that generic, amen, generic fulfillment will never completely satisfy like the real thing, baby, himself. 
The eyes he wants us to see with, the ears he wants us to hear with, and the understanding he wants us to experience is not physical or cognitive. It's spiritual. It's from the heart. It's faith. God wants us to want him. His will is for us to turn, to convert, in order for him to heal us. Lest they see and being converted, and I heal them. His will is for us to turn. He not only wants to be the one who does it, that, which is his will, he also knows that he is the only one who can. He is the true and complete remedy. When we want to want him, we turn, convert, and move towards our source and our heal. Because see, God knows you'll do what you want to do. Well, I don't want to go to church this morning, so guess what? You don't go to church. I don't want to read my Bible, so guess what? You don't read your Bible. I want a double-decker burrito from Taco Bell. So you go get one. <laughs> I want to go to the park today. It's pretty. Well, then you go. <laughs> you do what you want to do. Nobody has to try to con you or trick you or encourage you or motivate you to do something that you already want to do. The scripture tells us that faith works through love. For those taking notes, that's Galatians 5, 6. You don't have to put it on the screen. The scripture tells us that faith works through love. And that without faith, it's not only impossible to please God, but you can't even come to him without it. And that's Hebrews eleven six. And listen, faith is of the heart, not the head. Amen. It says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your what? Heart. Didn't say believe in your head. No, well, you know, I got to thinking about it. I heard this religion, that religion. I've heard this agnostic, that atheist. I've heard them all. And I have come to the conclusion that you're just in your head. And as we learned in the last message series, for those who were part of that, the Lord communicates with our spirit, not our mind anyways. I can't hear God. Well, you're not listening in the right place. You got your heart turned off. Just like if you got your phone turned off. Baby, where you been? I've texted you 10 times today. You okay? I had to come over to make sure you're okay because it's not like you to not answer my text. Are you all right? Yeah, I just had my phone turned off. <laughs> See, the first part of Isaiah 6, 9 through 10 is our want to. We don't want it. We didn't want to see. Well, okay. Have at it. I'll give you what you want. The Lord gave us what we wanted, giving us what we want. In other words, you choose, you choose. But the last part of this verse that we've been hunkered down on is his will. He wants to. It's his will. It's his want to. Listen, and him wanting us to want it also, lest you see. So the Lord wants us to want him. He wants us to convert, to turn from ourselves unto him. In other words, stop trying to fix a problem you're not qualified to correct. And if, if, if we get to a place where we want to connect, why did you say it that way? Because you can deny him to your last breath. We said it last week. Well, there's always an opportunity with God, even at your last breath, not if you don't want it. Yes. So if we get to a place where we want to connect, 
He wants us to quit trying to connect with him using our head because that's, <laughs> because that's, that's where we're tied up in. And he wants us to connect with our hearts. He has set this thing up to work correctly when we turn to our heart. See, that's how he wants to do it. As I was praying over somebody this morning, how can two walk together unless they agree? Are you trying to persuade God? No. Or are you going to let God persuade you? You're still all miffed and puffy and packed. Well, I invited God to my table. Where is he yet? We're going to talk this out. You can even tell by the tone. There's no honor. You can't listen. You can't access what you don't honor. Amen. I can't get nothing out of that pastor, that prophet, that evangelist. I can't get nothing, I ain't nothing out of them. No, you can't access what you don't honor. They might have something to change the direction of your life from the Lord, but you ain't going to get it. Amen or oh me. So he wants to connect with our heart. Use your heart, your place of want to. That's your place of why. It's the center of self. And he wants us to want him. Not because he's lacking self-esteem or anything else for that matter, okay? Because even though he's all sufficient and complete in himself, he knows that he is the only solution to our problems. He wants us to want him for our benefit, not his, but you choose. You got to choose. Will we choose to keep seeing with our eyes and not perceive? I don't want to see God. God's like, okay, so be it. Will we choose to keep hearing with our ears and not understand? And as we're going to get into next week, I'm pretty sure, unless he changes it on me again, to keep, to keep hearing with our ears and not understand. In other words, well, that's not the way they taught me down in Grandma's church. Well, he just gave you ten scriptures and put it in context, and the same thing he's been talking about for five weeks with other scriptures that back those up, complete context. Yeah, but that's not what we believe. I had that happen. My first senior pastor at a denominational church, the head deacon's wife had cancer. And I said, well, let's bring her in front of the church and let's lay hands on her, let's anoint her with oil. And he looked at me just as straight in the face and says, we don't do that here. Jesus. I said, but I said, it's in James chapter 5. It's as New Testament as you can get. I mean, that's what the Lord commands. We don't do that here. She died. It says, the word of God is no effect because you choose the traditions of men. Yeah, I've had some uprooting in my life, and you might get it next week when you come. Like I said, next week you might leave mad, but you will not leave ignorant. Amen. 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 <laughs> you choose. Will we choose to keep hearing with our ears and not understand? If we do, so be it. He will allow and honor our decision. You choose. But at any time, we want, we want to want what he wants and convert. Listen, he'll heal us, but you've got to choose. Stand as the music plays. What will you choose? Isn't that the question? Will you want to want him or will you want to keep wanting what you want? Because you choose. Oh, lest they see. That'll preach all day. He wants us to see. That's his will. He wants us to hear. 
He wants us to perceive. He wants us to understand. And He wants us to be healed. That is the will of God for all of us. But you choose. Lest they see. Oh my, God loves you. And always has a list they see for all of us. But He will allow us to see with our eyes and not perceive. He will allow us to hear with our ears and not understand. He will not just allow it, but He will honor it. He will enforce it. And if that's what we want, that's what we'll get. But His will is lest they see. He wants us to want Him. And turn, but you choose.